There are 18 structures and 10 improvements that you can build in Minecraft Legends. Some of these are insanely powerful and some of them are insanely similar, so working out which eight should go on your hotbar is a really tricky thing, but I'm going to be showing you every single structure, how it works and what it does, and whether you should consider it in today's video. And we're going to start with the Improvement Hub because this is required to build any of the improvements in the game, most of which will explain themselves. I mean, Gather Iron will allow you to gather iron for the first time. The same is true for gather coal and for diamonds and for redstone. However, if we want to build any of these improvements and show you what they look like, we're going to need some prismarine and so... As I was saying, the four basic ore gathering ones are pretty self-explanatory, but the alley storage uh, improvement, one maybe isn't so obvious, it increases your supplies of all the basic resources, so prismarine, lapis, stone, and wood. These are very valuable to have. The only thing that I'd say is more valuable is abundant alleys. This will increase the number of alleys that you have as a whole, which means instead of being able to gather with two alleys at a time, or three alleys at a time, as well as being able to build of the same number, you'll be able to gather with more than that. So right now I have three alleys gathering for me and I can have three alleys building. You can see that in the bottom left of the screen with the gold and the uh, blue. But if I build the abundant alleys, you'll see how once the alleys come back from their missions, you'll see those numbers go up from two and zero to four and one. It should be three and one, but the one finished building the structure. I now have four of each type of alley, something that honestly in both single player and multiplayer, you can't really have too many of these. The more you have, the more powerful you get. There are diminishing returns past two or three maybe, uh, but I definitely think they're very valuable. Uh, then the frames, flames of improvement is a very obvious one, and so is the banner. This increases the number of mobs that can follow you, and the number of mobs that can exist altogether. And then there's just two slightly more confusing improvements. <laughs> The last couple of improvements are a little bit less self-explanatory though, because this one says build power towers. This will allow you to build something called a power tower. In other words, there are free structures uh, which are limited to only being possible once you have these. In the campaign, that means you can only activate them once you have these, but in multiplayer, you can just place them whenever. Uh, they are very, very powerful. And then build the first will allow you to build the first. As you might guess, uh, this is a unique type of mob spawner that will only be possible after you've built one of these, and then in the campaign, also collect them across your world. These first spawners require a lot of a given resource, whether that's coal, diamonds, or redstone, and that actually means you need to have three of the corresponding upgrade to be able to even store that much to originally get these. It's very, very expensive, and we're gonna have to go on a bit of a redstone mining trip. Uh, I'm just kidding, it was a trip to get one of these birds from across the world. Absolutely love them, my favorite mount for no particularly good reason, but it's riding a bird, what's not to love? Anyway, bunch of redstone found in swamps and jungles, which we're gonna have to gather silly amounts of, so that we can build one of these first of stone spawners, 400 redstone and 225 lapis is no small cost, it also then has a huge build time associated with it, um, but this will allow you to build the most powerful units. You know, if there's the tier one units of the plank golems and the cobblestone golems, then there's the tier two units representing the zombie spawners, and then there's tier three, maybe as warrior. Uh, this is the absolute highest tier. Uh, it's ho so high, in fact, uh, that you have to spend so much even to get one. But look at this, look at the size of these guys. They spawn their own golems. It's a whole fun thing that you've now got available to you. So this is the first, and then the equivalent, but more defensively, I guess you could say, or more structure-based, is these towers. So uh, the Blast Tower also takes 400 redstone, uh, which I think is fun, as well as 600 stone. But look at the size of this thing. Even the first looks absolutely tiny by comparison, but we have to go on another redstone trip if we want to get this. So the Stun Tower, the Frost Tower, and the Blast Tower were all made possible by this Build the Towers monument, and they're all specifically non-lethal. And it's very hilarious to say yes, a structure of this size is a non-lethal one, but it is in fact true, but they've got incredibly powerful non-lethal abilities. I think Frost and Stun are fairly obvious, we'll build them anyway to show you, but uh, Blast is one that will knock enemies back. Oh no, I'm swarmed by piglins, what would I do? They're trying to get me! Ah, oh, there's just, there's just no defense besides walking at slightly more than a brisk pace, but I just, I just don't think I can do that. Except now, they're getting in range of my tower, which I think actually killed them. Yeah, it's meant to be non-lethal, but I mean, clearly when you're this small, non-lethal means actually murder. I mean, you could die from a taser. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is my favorite non-lethal tower, mostly because it is in fact not non-lethal. But there are two other choices we have. Uh, one of these is made from diamonds, uh, and one of them is made from coal. So we'll go for the diamond one first, the frost tower. Just for fun, by the way, I'm setting my first into battle. They just took down a tower using two hits each, and they're just destroying hoglins like it's nothing. Love to see it. You know, how about you take down this tower just to show- let's- let's just show it off. This is a fresh tower, hasn't been hurt yet. It's literally throwing hoglins at them, and they're gonna ignore those hoglins and take it down in also four hits. Wow. <laughs> Strong dudes. Wow, I'm starting to think that they're called the first and have huge costs for a reason. Diamond is going to help me immensely during this battle. The battle of showing off this brand new tower, the Stun Tower. So, uh, or the, sorry, the Frost Tower. You can tell it's frosty because I had to go to a frosty place to get the diamonds. So, I could set this up defensively, sure. Or, I could decide to just set this up right near where all the piglins are. And I'm gonna try and go for a little bit of a balance on that, because I don't want it to be so close that it gets killed by the piglins. But let's show you what the Frost Tower is like. Because I assumed the Frost Tower and the Stun Tower would have a huge amount of overlap, because what is stunning if not just kind of freezing something in place? However, the Frost Tower uses this fun piston mechanism to throw a giant ice cube at enemies, freezing them in place and presumably making them weaker to other attacks, while the Stun Tower has a much bigger radius and this fun bell attack, uh, which seems to knock enemies back quite a bit. So the Frost Tower will freeze them in place if you want to attack them there, and the Stun Tower is great if you want to just get them really far away. I think the Blast Tower is the best of the three towers, but you're probably much more interested in the basic structures, or at least we haven't spoken about them yet. How could we be missing out on the wall? And so let's talk about the six basic structures you'll always have. These just require wood, stone, or lapis, and so you can use as many of them as you have resources, and the wall is the obvious go-to. It's a thing that you can put between you and an enemy. However, the interesting thing about this is it's not one structure, even though the building allies see it that way. It's lots of individual structures, so I can remove individual pillars in the wall just like this. That's pretty fun. Then there's the ramp. The ramp will allow you to go up and down things. This is way less useful to use as a ramp, even though you can see, look, here's me going up and then down a tree. Uh, there are some situations I'm sure where this is handy. I mean, look, look how clock tall I'm taking this ramp here, uh, but it can't be used over enemy structures and it can't be used over piglin structures. It can't be used in so many scenarios that it basically isn't very useful besides as a bridge. Uh, the gate, on the other hand, is like a wall, but it will let you and your friends through. This is really useful, uh, much more so than can be said about the arrow tower by itself. A single arrow tower will shoot a very few arrows at the enemies, which might be handy if they've got a long range and there's only a few piglins attacking, uh, but really arrow towers are just a very weak thing which can be used en masse to create a big effect. They can also be upgraded in quite a few ways to make them more powerful, as you're going to see in this video. However, something that can't be upgraded and is just kind of questionable is the lapis flag. But let me show you the value of the lapis flag by showing you what it's like when I don't have one. So we'll set down a plank golem spawner just over here, and we'll spawn in a bunch of plank golems just to defend my base while I'm off showing you structures, right? So as you can see, these take two lapis each, and as I'm spawning them in, look how slowly my lapis is replenishing. I only have 980 now. Oh man, it's so low, except also when you play multiplayer, lapis comes in by default, and when you're playing against piglins, you kill piglins and get lapis from that. And the lapis cost of minions is so hilariously low, I cannot imagine a world where you would actually uh, have serious issues uh, with it. And so that's what the lapis flag is there to prevent. It's there to prevent an issue that no one has ever had. It allows you to uh, spawn lapis by default from your base. If you're summoning really high lapis monsters, I could maybe see this being a thing. This structure is multiplayer only, by the way. Speaking of things that are multiplayer only, the Carpentry Hut is amazing in both multiplayer and single player. You'll want to use these as often as you can because they can heal structures, including your wells or your portals, but they can also heal themselves, as you're going to see right here. Wow, the Carpentry Hut is healing itself so that it can heal the things around it. These things are amazing and a key part of any offensive or defensive base that actually is going to see some action. Make sure you use the Carpentry Hut as much as you can 
I'd say uh, the you know the, uh, as far as the kabloomery goes, it's a bit more of a luxury though, uh, because building this thing uh, does take some time. But it does turn the arrows, which looked like this before, into fire arrows, which will kill piglins like this, which is really really nice. Adding a little bit of extra boom uh, to your attacks is really nice. Uh, whether that's a redstone cannon, a scatter tower, or an arrow tower, I think the kabloomery is worth building if you have some spare resources. I also think the mason is a must uh, as far as if you want to secure things. This is the most defensive structure in the game, and as you can see here, as soon as it gets placed down, it turns the wood structures around it into stone. This stone wall is much better protected than my wooden wall. If you want to make lots of walls, you could do that too, but making those walls out of stone is a great way to add to their health, and then you can improve their health with a carpentry hut. There are all sorts of synergies in this game, such as the protector tower. I mean, this protector tower is really great. It will ex uh, neutralize any explosion that is thrown at it, and so this is really cool to just see giant explosions that would otherwise end the building just being caught in midair. It's a bit like a trophy system from the Call of Duty games. I don't think those exist in real life, but it's cool that it exists here because you can use them to chain together to build one under the sphere of the second one, and even though this big monster wants to destroy it, he can't because it's protected by the protector tower. You could chain these together infinitely and use them to protect your other super strong towers, like maybe a scatter tower. Wow, I built this in the protected zone too, and it was perfectly fine. And as you can see here, it fires two arrows at a time with less cooldown, but it has a lower range and a slightly higher cost than the arrow tower. I'd say if you really need some firepower on the front lines and you think you can protect them fairly well, the scatter tower is a no-brainer, but the coal cost to me means that for most people, you're just gonna spam arrow towers and that's perfectly fine. By the way, speaking of perfectly fine, I interrupt this list of structures to show you the tiger with speed and jump boost. Nothing like this puts a smile on my face. It's an absolute delight. Uh, speaking of delights, the redstone cannon, uh, this is the really long building process that they have. And this thing is so powerful that when I aimed it at the opponent's base, I was hoping just to weaken it a little bit, show you uh, the range of it with or without the spyglass uh, overlook. However, this thing was so powerful that it just destroyed the enemy base in one. It ruined my first attempt at recording this video, and that's why you see these structures in a slightly different world. But let's get back to that main world, which I accidentally left as friends could join, and so it looks like one of them has. Let's hope Green has some good intentions. Oh, apparently we have a visitor who also wants to explain what's going on here. I don't know if he knows I'm playing against AI here or not. It's okay. But let's show you the redstone cannon now as its regular range on this world. Absolutely destroy that structure at distance. And now let's build a spyglass overlook. So here you can see I've got a redstone launcher and I can launch all the way almost into their base. I can hit the towers just in front of it and I can fire into that and it's really great and everything. However, the spyglass overlook is going to improve the range of my towers, my scattered towers, and my redstone launcher. So my redstone launcher that could previously go as far as what it's just destroyed. In fact, let's go show you that in person. I'm actually, I was pretty impressed it did destroy it. So a redstone launcher can destroy enemy bases. You usually wouldn't use it on piglins in 1v1s, but if you're playing against a big piglin base, the redstone launcher is usually what will turn the tide. However, a redstone launcher gets a huge improvement from the spyglass overlook. This uses diamonds, and so, you know, a little bit of diamond, a little bit of redstone, combine the two things together, and what do you get? You get absolute power incarnate. That's what you get. Okay, so this redstone launcher that could previously just about penetrate to there can go all the way in their base now. Look at this. And it's not just the redstone launcher that gets buffed from this. It is literally anything that has a range. So this arrow tower now, look at its range. But if it's anywhere over in the zone, uh, actually, oh look, you can see that. If it's in the zone, it has a better rage than when it's just outside the zone. So yeah, we can have some insane ranges on our arrow towers, which is really nice. The only thing better than increasing the range is increasing the firing rate, I would say, especially for a redstone launcher, which is such a low one. So how do we improve that? We get some redstone. Oh, we already ganked some redstone. Do you think Green went out and got the redstone? That's nice of him, sir. You know what? I made some, you know, disparaging comments about you know, just having YouTubers join your games. But actually, as it turns out, that's what you want. Helping help make the video. What a, what a good friend. Anyway, so we need 150 redstone for this. <laughs> I I really want to know if does he does he think this is a multiplayer game? What does he what does he think's happening? You know, not gonna question it. Just gonna enjoy the gifts and also end up two redstone short of what I need. You know, damn it. Is he is he taking my minions? You know, it's fine. 
It's it's up to him what he does. Oh great, a chest. What do you know? Get get a little bit a little bit richer while we're here. While we were gone, our stuff started taking damage. No 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 no. Don't agree. Don't agree. Don't consent. This isn't okay. Okay, so now we've got a battle drum, and this is going to increase the firing rate of nearby launchers. This is probably going to be a little bit harder to measure uh, with the redstone cannon, with its fun... Look at that, it's got some powered minecarts, a piston. None of that makes any sense. This is an actual valid Minecraft redstone, but I'm not, I'm not here to criticize the accuracy to Minecraft, because the Minecraft accuracy to real life is already questionable. Instead, I'm here to show you increased range and increased firepower on a redstone cannon. So, you know, it's already great having a better range, being able to go all the way in there, all the way to a damn one of these structures if we want to. So let's show you what this cannon is all about now. You saw how long the respawn time was on getting more of them out there, but now it's gonna shoot its four bursts out there or something, get some huge damage done, take an entire structure down, and then it goes into this cooldown mode, and let's see what it looks like now. Whoa! That was faster than I was expecting. We are back up, ready to fire some more in there. And with the distances we have, I mean, just I can I can down their structures before they can do anything to me, which is wonderful, right? Look at this. So those are the 17 structures which are available in Minecraft Legends multiplayer mode. There is also an extra one structure to make 18, you know, plus the 10, uh, which is available only in the campaign called the Ice Trap. It's really cheap and just freezes enemies as they go over it. So it is worth mentioning it exists, but it isn't very great. And uh, it is also worth mentioning uh, that any of the structures I've shown off can be combined together so we can have a battle drum uh, next to our thing next to our kabloomery to make all of our towers just that little bit more powerful which we could then stonemason up so now we're just going to place all of these right here we're going to have a silly number of them as well and you're going to see how just five towers with three buffs is a huge buff when you add them all together actually we'll see exactly how true that is so this is the buff for the fire rate i oh, know this is the buff for the range so now my towers are going to be able to shoot from further um this is my buff to their firing speed and this is the buff to give them a little bit of explosive every time they shoot something. So now, we put four, five tower, towers just outside the enemy base, and uh, all of a sudden we're firing rain down. <laughs> we just, look at this, they're, they're, they're going everywhere all the time. Arrow towers are pretty weak by themselves, especially against structures. Oh, we need to, we need to defend ourselves here. Um, but adding all these uh, combined things together makes it wonderful. Minecraft Legends is a game where the resources are king because it's a strategy game. You want to, you know, the ultimate strategy is in having the better stuff and the real strategy is making sure you have better stuff than your opponent because then you can tear through their base using just arrows like you can see here. Anyway, yeah, thank you uh, very much for watching. I hope this was a useful guide. Thank you to the resource gathering from Gree in there at the end. I, uh... I'll, I'll have to speak to them at the end of this. And one, one, I could have to question what, he, what he's up to here. And uh, also thank you uh, to everyone else uh, who has enjoyed the video so much so that they've subscribed. I really appreciate people who subscribe. It's just a tiny little number going up, but it lets me know that you're liking what I'm doing and that everything I do isn't just yelling into a void. Thank you for making me not yell into a void. And thank Microsoft for allowing this game to be on Games Pass so anyone can play it for free. Kind of negate or, you know, play it complimentary. Uh, which is honestly one of my favorite things about Games Pass. Playing new games uh, for the same price. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, my structures are slowly being taken down. But in spite of that, I'm still just launching so far into their base. And I could make it even further in there if I wanted to, right? Just more and more and more towers. More and more and more upgrades. Nothing is stopping my ultimate power besides a single hoglin. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Wait, you know what? Okay, I want to know now, since we're here doing this anyway, is there a max number of allies you can build? I've got 16 builders at this at this moment. I just feel like I want to go more now. Okay, just look at this right here. 11 gathering allies all getting stone at the same time. Look at that stone rate. Okay, this is fun. You know what? This just started as a way to show off all the structures. I just want to know how insane we can get now. <laughs> we're at 20, 30 and 29 now. There is no limit to the number of ballets, clearly. We are absolutely going to tear this world apart. There is going to be nothing left <laughs> but grass by the time it's done.
<laughs> you know, at what point are we the bad guys for destroying nature? You know, at what point? <laughs> you know, you just you just have to question it some. <laughs> okay, do you see these big stone pillars here? I think they're getting in the way of my lovely view, and so I think what we do here. <laughs> Is we slowly, systemically tear it apart with Alex. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I did build the most towers there. And I did have a good game. And I hope you did too. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Goodbye.